Hi folks and welcome back to the channel and welcome to our little paid park up in Arras which is a um, nice little French town city um, that seems to have got some historical stuff and a nice air yes. service stop absolutely and it's, it's proper posh so it's we've got showers, water electricity if you want it's one of those things you kind of choose it on the way in don't yeah. you although i say i didn't get a choice for electrics so i think you must get that with the pitch which yeah. is is fine these pitches are huge they are they're parked so close together it's so funny but they pit you they give you a really decent amount of space mm. so yeah love it so yeah we're here to go and uh, have a wander around they got showers here as well and a few other bits and bobs uh, and tarmac so you know no muddy feet tonight. Yay, I like that. <laughs> but first, you want some food, don't you? I do want some food. I've got my heart set on pizza, even though we've just bought burgers because I wanted burgers. Yeah. But what are you going to do? So should we go in and see what's around? I think we should. Ooh. We'll bring you with us, obviously. So, gonna have a look. This video is sponsored by XL Hosting. If you're looking for a domain name, web hosting, or amazing email, go to xlhosting.uk and sign up today. You're not taking a jacket, why not? Because I think I'm just going to have to carry it because I'm already roasted. It is quite warm in that sun. Mm. Today is supposed to be quite a nice day. Tomorrow is supposed to be very nice. And Thursday is 23 degrees. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Cracking flags, folks. Yeah. Oh. We just worked out, so we get free electric here. So we thought, you know, we can cook our food later, assuming we might want something later mm. on the free electric. But then with all this solar, it's free electric anyway. <laughs> Every, and everything is charged because the last time we had a good solar day, we charged everything again then. So, yeah, I like this off grid stuff. Yeah, it's good, yeah, isn't it? I do. Who needs, like, grid? Who needs can, grid when you can be off, off grid? <laughs> Cool. Should we get going then? Yep, let's get locked up and go in. Cool. So we're just on our way out and we thought we'd show you the showers. And we're going to hang stuff on the back of the door. So there's a big shower. Bit of a seat on it as well. Got Place to hang your stuff. A little shelf there for stuff as well. It smells a bit clean but smelly. It's clean but funky. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't get used that often. Yeah. Well, that's good then. I'll just bring me crocs. Do the toilet. And then it cleans itself afterwards. So obviously the um, usual style of stainless steel everything. So it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Mandy chooses. No. Right, well let's go and get some food then. The bells are calling. Yes. The bells. Pizza. <laughs> All right, Jack, about a 10 minute walk? Yeah. 10 minute walk, and now we're in this little square. It's not the big square, is it? No, this is the Place de Heroes, but it, you don't say the HD, so it's the Place uh, de Heroes. We may have peaked too soon. <laughs> or rather, we're hungry at a time when all the restaurants are shut. But these buildings are lovely, aren't they? Oh, they're so beautiful. It's very, I say it like Amsterdam, but they say it's Flemish, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. Lots and lots of them, but I think Amsterdam being one of my favourite places is making this feel lovely and familiar and wonderful for yeah. me. Yeah, very nice. We've not been here before, so I thought we'd give it a go. And um don't normally do cities or towns, but considering it's 10 minutes away from the air, I thought we'd give it a go. I think that's it. Finding somewhere that's nice and secure mm. and you aren't leaving your bankers with people milling around and things, then yeah, do it. Get in. Oh, yeah.
That was nice. That was nice. The French know how to do burgers. They ask you how you want your burger done, so we went for medium. Mmm. Oh, very nice. Pink in the middle. That was very, very nice. It was a, a fair amount of food. Yes. Expensive? Mmm. How much was it? 80 euros. Right. For two burgers, we, ch we shared a mac and cheese, two beers, a coke and two desserts. Yeah. So we got a lot for it, I suppose, yeah. considering we're, it's right on this square. Yeah. So... But, um, yeah, like Mandy says, epic quality of food. Yeah, there wasn't one mouthful of that that I didn't utterly, utterly enjoy. So I think that's well worth it right there, isn't, yeah. it, isn't it? So now back to the van for a little bit. Maybe a bit of a siesta. <laughs> do, the, do the French have a version of a siesta? I don't know. I don't think so. That's one for Google. Mm. So, quick update. Yes, they do. The French have a little nap. I, there are many translations of it, but yeah, a little nap in the afternoon. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. I prefer to have a nap in the afternoon and work late in the evening. Yeah, sounds good to me. Well, it's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new life. And I'm feeling you. fine. And I'm feeling good. <laughs> Doing a bit of a litter run and then back in again. Yes. Gonna do the tunnels, apparently, during World War One. World War One, yeah, the yeah. Wellington tunnels. Yeah. Go on, tell us about these little tunnels then. So they were dug in the 1800s, but they were utilised during the First World War, where resistance fighters and Allied troops all hid under there while the place was invaded. And apparently there's, there's like a hospital under there and there's graffiti on the walls from all the servicemen that have been under there. So yeah, it's uh, opened up as one of the biggest underground museums in the area, don't you know? Sounds like the place we went to in Jersey, that, with the hospital war tunnels. Yeah, the war tunnels under there, and I'm sure Jeannie took us somewhere in the Netherlands that was the same, so it must be a thing. How did you find them, though? I don't know. You know? With some so... little old fella smoking his pipe. They're <laughs> like, oh, you know, when I were a kid, there were tunnels down there. Yeah. Where do you go look for them? There were tunnels down on Green as well when I was a kid. Yeah, true, yeah. All the bunkers and that. Yeah. Mm. Tunnels everywhere. Right. You only go over ground when you wumbles. Oh, no, no. You'll get him. <laughs> You'll get him. Oh, dear. Anyway, ten minute walk. Ten minute knackered walk. Already. Knackered already. <laughs> we'll tell you more about him when we get there. Yes. We're knackered now. It was a little bit further than we thought. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got the wrong place, didn't I? Yeah, I thought it was the wrong church or whatever, but... We are here and hopefully we haven't missed it because we're aiming to be there nice and early and now we're just about on time. Yeah, so let's see if we get in. Yeah. <laughs> It was definitely a very interesting place to visit. Um, 
if not for just the buildings, the little squares, shops, places to eat or places to visit as well. Um, but for the little air we've got on, it's quite convenient. I mean, I can't believe it. 11 quid and that's 24 hours, including electric. You just mm -hmm. get given like a QR code you have to bip. Yeah. At the front, these little scanners on everything, isn't there? The weird thing was they got to pay extra for water. Yeah. I would have thought it was the way around. Yeah, extra for electric, yeah. But it's only two euros for 10 minutes of water. So yeah. you've just managed to get, what, 60 litres or something? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely fine. And the facilities are okay. Yeah, they're doable. But they've got the, nice the, space. And that's quiet location wise. Yes, definitely. And the showers are doable i would yeah. recommend leaving footwear on the whole time yeah um but if you need to get clean then That'll yeah do. it's better than places that don't have showers yeah so yeah um, and a little story about the rats as well we were trying to explain in the town but it was a bit windy loads of people around and that um, and that was that when the brits came here in the war um, you don't pronounce the s on some french names so it's arat and then obviously if you're in manchester arat yeah. It could be either, are you all right? Yeah. Or I've just seen a rat, mate. Look's there, it's gnawing on it. And I guess that's where the French thought, oh, we'll just call the place rat. What else are we? Rat, a rat? Yeah, and then there's these, these uh, signature rats all over the place. So there is a couple of stories about the rats. Yeah, they've there? got they're a different, different version ones. of it, haven't they? So it depends on which <laughs> websites you're looking at. But yeah. the one we used to book the uh, Wellington tunnels had yeah. one story. And yeah. then when we bought some of the chocolate rats, which are a, a speciality, there was a slightly different story on that one. But yeah. it's good. I love a good background oh, story yeah. before I deep delve into something anyway. I it's love like it. Manchester and the bees, isn't it? It's yeah. worker bees, but other people have got a different story. Like, oh no, it's for Boddington's. Yep. No. Well, well the Boddington's did the have worker. a bee, but that was the worker bee thing yeah. as well. So <laughs> just, um, yeah, it's all good fun anyway. Um, but this is our time. We are just basically getting set up now to leave. So this is our time in Arat. Oh, well, they, they, they decided to pronounce the S in Arat oh, okay. now. So, so Arat there. Yeah. So our time is up. It is. And we're off to um, further explore some more. Absolutely. those stones has got names on of soldiers that actually don't have grave so they're remembered in name only and there are 70,000 of them 
all listed up there. And there's a dog. He's guarding them. He's looking out for them. Whilst I was flying the drone over Teatbell Monument, which is the one that we've just been showing you, um, I spotted this other one, which is the Ulster Monument. So I thought we'd head down the road and go and check this one out. Just literally a two minutes drive away from the uh, Teatvel Tower um, is the Ulster Memorial Tower to the Ulster Regiment. But this area is littered with other graves. We can see one over there, war graves, Commonwealth war grave. There's one just over the back here They're as well. They're huge as well, aren't they? Yeah. They're just everywhere. So uh, it's nice to see how well looked after they are as well. Yeah, we've seen all the Commonwealth war grave vans out today with all the lawn mowers and things, making sure it's all well cared for. Yeah. So we thought we'd just uh, pop in and pay our respects. Yes. We went in the little cafe at the monument and there we were told by the current caretakers uh, that there was a little tour going on later this afternoon. So we hung around to have a tour through the Teatval Woods um, to look at the trenches and, and basically learn more about what happened around here. was probably the most realistic sort of war cemetery tour ever really wasn't it? It really was. I mean Rocky knew what he was talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. And he got really emotive, mm. you could tell as a as an Ulster man yeah. that he was really into. And he served as well for the same regiment. Yes. So I think the connection there is very real. Um and to see exactly where they were. Uh, the trenches obviously were um what do you say? Reconstructed, I guess. Yeah. But then there's also the original ones that have fallen back in as well. So you could see exactly what the conditions would have been like. Yeah. And and he painted a picture of the difference in the landscape 
to how it is yeah. now. So as we're walking along this road, this road was here during that war, but it was a lot lower down. And he just told us all about that and all about the difference and mm. when the changes were made and, and things. And then where they were fighting, so where the lines were across the fields over the back there. So I've flown the drone so I can give some sort of perspective as to how close they were in the forest, which is where the three regiments um, started the attacks from, across five lines of German defence. One of them was like concrete, kind of, you know, they were really... They were staying, yeah. weren't they? I think that's it. And he explained the difference as well, because, I mean, we do do a lot of this stuff, but having the difference in the preparedness and the quality of the trenches mm. for an attacking force onto a defensive force. Yeah. And that, for me, just helps build up this picture of, of how it all was. And it's all blooming horrific, isn't it? But it is um, something that you can't even imagine, really, can you? Just to, to go through all this and just to see people, I don't know, just go and storm yeah. across a field, knowing that you know they might not make it there. Yeah. But, um... And I think one of the real poignant parts was for the 100th anniversary, they widened this road to make more parking. Yeah. And when they widened this road, they found remains of three soldiers when they were doing it. So even then, they, like so, so close to now, you know, not not really that long ago, the finding, the still finding. Yeah. Um, they managed to identify one of them. So yeah, they also found artifacts. Um, I think it's every few months they go through and reconstruct you know like if uh, like the sandbags don't last very long or whatever so they're constantly in a state of um sort of maintenance of all the trenches and in doing so they're going to unearth artifacts and he showed us um a button polish kind of uh, protector for your for your uniform didn't he Something. yeah it's just like a little like this shaped and you just push it push it over your button and you could get your brasso on it without getting it on your tunic and then there was a spoon from a was it sergeant hadfield in from Glossop. Glossop, yeah and he'd put his spoon down the side of his putty which are like socks that come up to your knees and he got shot and the, the bullet went through the spoon but they were able to find them because everything's got um obviously their um identification numbers and yeah things, aren't id they? Yeah. numbers or regiment info and things like that so they were able to find the story and apparently this guy went back um, convalesced and then was sent back out again or wanted to come back out again yeah. but obviously been shot in the leg so couldn't do much so that um, he was ended up still serving yeah the maintenance call was yeah. just literally digging trenches and, yeah. and whatnot but he couldn't stop and he, he survived enough to go back home again which yeah. was, was a lovely story but it'd be interesting to see when they start clearing out that big bunker mm. what they're going to find in there because they've just not had a chance to stabilise it enough to clear that out yet but that's yeah. a future plan so if you are ever in this area uh, please do visit the Ulster Tower Monument um, and obviously speak to um, whoever's here. It is on rotation, so right now it's Rocky and Joe, but they do have a rotation every, every three months? Every six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. is it? So they might be there, might be somebody else, but um, yeah, well worth a visit. Um, and it is just literally a stone's throw away from uh, Teepal as well, isn't it? Yeah, and if you do like the cemeteries and all of that stuff, there is so much to do here. So if you really like this kind of thing, there's quite a few park-ups that you can stay at close by and you can spend a good couple of days going yeah. and seeing the, the cemeteries and memorials and things around here. Really and interesting. And it is beautiful. It is poignantly beautiful. Yeah. But for now, we're going to find our park-up for tonight. Yes. And uh, we shall see you tomorrow. We will. It's a new day and we're going to do new things. We are going to do new things. We're going to do something we've not done much of. Yeah, but you're going to have to wait until the next video to find that bit out. <laughs> oh, you tease. Uh, <laughs> it's a nice, it's a lovely forest um, park up where we are. So there's plenty of things to do here. Uh, walking and cycling and stuff to go and see and that. But I think it's going to be quite interesting, this one. Yep, I'm quite looking forward to it. Peace and quiet and yep. stuff to do all at the same time. Yep. Bonus. Oh, yes. So I hope you've had a good week. Um, I do want to say as well, thanks for everybody's lovely comments to say how much you enjoy us being back together and, you know, not narc at each other or anything well, like that. Well, not on camera anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's well, much better, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think they'd notice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah uh have a great week and we shall um see you next week we will take care folks see ya bye, bye. <laughs> you hand all the time <laughs> <laughs> going down there. yeah bye blackbird inside your chest calls on you to cry you decided it was time for you.
him to fly. 